Today we're going to talk about pruning your fig tree. The right way is really the easiest way. You avoid problems, your tree won't be a mess, it'll be strong, it'll be beautiful. This is a tried and true method. It goes back to Japanese pruning techniques and principles and there's a reason that it works. And there's a reason people have been doing it for hundreds of years and getting beautiful trees. Keep watching and we'll find out. Where I learned, I learned from some really great people on our figs. Uh, a lot of folks there have been growing trees for a long time, a lot of variation, and you can really pick out right away what works and what doesn't work. So after doing a lot of research and looking at the different methods, uh, this is the method that I've stuck with. And I think, it, I think it works for me. I think it's gonna work for you. And this method really is the best for potted culture trees that you're growing in pots. We're talking about just growing a beautiful fig tree that's going to give you lots of fruit. So let's talk about pruning the first year. There's a bunch of different philosophies out there. A lot of people say pinch right away because you have to pinch to get fruit and uh, I don't believe that's true. The reason you want to grow a single liter tree is to get as thick of a trunk as possible. The thicker the trunk gets the more energy and delivery it's going to get to your tree. First year, single liter, don't do anything else. The fastest way to get a tree with a thick trunk is to grow it in a single liter all the way up. Grow it in a single liter, pinching all the side branching buds that, that grow out. And you have one bud, it's called the apical bud, and that's at the very top of your fig tree. All the hormones for growth are gonna be pushed towards that ap apical bud and that's gonna get you a tall seven, eight, nine foot tree. This tree right here is an Oban. It's one of the Figue du Monde varieties. And this tree grew to about, I think about nine or 10 feet at the, from the soil line. And this is a SIP, self-irrigating pot. This pot is probably 17 gallon uh, trade pot, somewhere around there and it doesn't have soil down here because that's where the, uh, the water goes. If you look at this trunk, you can see how thick it is. And you can see where my hand is. So let's talk about what this is gonna look like in the years to come. So the first year, when you first get your cuttings, this is a Beltrana from Figaholics. It's only one month old and it has roots out the bottom using the comprehensive fig rooting method that I have in another video. So you're gonna have a couple of nodes and what you're gonna to wanna to do, pick one of these. Right now, I'm gonna let these grow to maybe that big and so they get well established. One of them is gonna show more dominance. You're gonna pick one of the nodes, typically whichever is dominant. Uh, if there's no specific dominance, pick the lower one because it just makes it easier to plant. And that's what you're gonna grow as your main branch, the entire first year. So that's what I did with this tree here. Like every other cutting, it had a couple of nodes and I pinched off a node and then I started with one single node. And then the, the cutting could put all its energy into growing that one node. It's not growing multiple branches, it's growing a single node. And this reached about nine or 10 foot tall from the soil line, so that's pretty huge. So the other factor that goes into this is how big your, is your pot size. That cutting went straight into this sip. Uh, you can also just put it into a 20 gallon or a 15 or a 10, whatever you want to do. I'll pot accordingly, start out with a five, move to a 10, and then a 15. That's going to give you a thicker trunk as well. So what's the end goal? At the end of your first season, you're going to cut to 30 inches. And you're going to have a big, thick trunk like this. This is a very thick trunk compared to another tree that somebody would have started cutting or pinching and have multiple branches. And so the tree is trying to send energy to all those different branches. This trunk is a lot thicker, guaranteed. That's a function of a single liter and also a function of your pot size. End of your first season, you're gonna to cut to 30 inches. You store the tree over winter. And then once the danger of desiccation is gone, you're gonna cut this to 24 inches. It's February 20th and the danger of extreme cold and uh, drying and desiccation is pretty much over. I'm in Cincinnati, zone 6AB. I'm gonna cut this to 24 inches. So this will be two feet tall. You can choose anywhere from 18 to 24, take your pick. If it's too tall, then the tree's gonna to be top heavy. 
and you're gonna have a bunch of wasted space down here. In the springtime, take out your tree, you wake it up, you give it a bunch of osmocote or whatever you're gonna do for your fertilizing regimen, and then the tree's gonna start to bud. And what you wanna do, this tree has lots of nodes, but what you wanna do is, as the tree buds out, you wanna get one node, eight or 10 inches off the soil line, and you're gonna let that one grow this way. You're gonna go up a couple nodes, and you're gonna pick a branch going the opposite way. Go up a couple of nodes, pick a branch going back. Go up a couple nodes, pick a branch going this way. So you have, from the top view, you're gonna have 12, three, six, and nine o'clock. You're gonna have four branches. You can also pick three, balance them out. But what you wanna do is space them a couple nodes up. You don't want them tight and you don't want two going in the same direction. So how do you pick those? Well, the tree's gonna be branching out all over the place, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna pinch off, you're gonna pick one that's strong and pinch off the competitors right around it. You're gonna pick another one that's gonna go in the other direction you need and pick off other competitors that go in the same direction. So you get your balance. You can do four, so what we're doing is we're building scaffolds in the second year. The number of scaffolds you have depends on how big your pot is. You can go with three scaffolds and then you just pick them, you just space them out a third and then you space them out this way as well, up and down, or you can go with four. You're going to go with a 20 gallon pot, you can go with four. They don't have to be perfectly spaced, but what you're going to do is you're going to use some ties to tie them down or some branch spreaders to spread them out. You don't want the branches to grow straight up, you want them to grow out, let's say about like that. You can get technical, but that's what you want. You don't want them flat, let's say 45 degrees thereabouts. So you're gonna have all these branches at 45 degrees. Once you have all those branches, you can let them grow the entire second season. That's what I'm gonna do with this tree. At the end of your second season, you're gonna cut those main scaffolds 18 to 24 inches. If you got a big 15 gallon plus pot, do 24. If you have a smaller pot around 10 or a seven gallon trade, maybe you do 18. So now you have scaffolds. So this is what it's gonna look like at the end of your second year. Here's a picture right here. And this is what it's gonna look like as a top view at the end of your second year. There's a picture. Your third year, at the end of your second year, you're gonna put the tree to bed, wake it up, beginning of your third year. Now you have a 24 inch trunk, you have three or four scaffolds, balanced out, balanced this way, and balanced this way. And then it's gonna start growing branches off of those. So what you end up having your third year and your fourth year is you have a really thick trunk and that's gonna supply those branches the most efficient way possible. Let's compare that to having multiple three or four branches coming out of the ground and you have all these little pom-poms and it's very inefficient for the tree. This is the best way to do it. Let's talk about why people don't do this. They're given advice that says you have to prune in the summer, you have to top your tree to get fruit. Last summer, I had over 100 trees in pots and I had at least 80% of those trees give me fruit the very first season from a cutting. So what are the competing factors as to why you're gonna do single leader or not? The reason you may not do single leader is you just don't know about it. Second reason is you're given advice that says the only way to get fruit is to pinch. As soon as you pinch this tree at 30 inches in your first year, and it's gonna go more than 30 inches if you have multiple branches or whatever, as soon as you pinch it, you're locking in this trunk. This trunk is not gonna get thicker it's gonna take a long time to catch up with a single leader tree trunk. Look at the folks that do bonsai. They'll put a tree in ground and grow it as a single whip to get that thick trunk and then bring it in and make bonsai. Same principle applies here. You need that single leader to get the thickest trunk possible. The thicker the trunk, the more energy flow. It's more efficient flow of energy to all of your fruiting branches. If you have multiple trunks, the tree is trying to serve multiple masters. So 80% of my trees gave me fruit the first year, growing as a single leader.
That includes Craven's Craving, which is a black Madeira type, and many other late ripening varieties. I had fruit the first year. Growing figs is not about a race. If you want a race to get fruit, go to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods and get yourself some figs there. But if you want to grow trees a very efficient and also a very aesthetic way, you want to do a single liter. Chalice, open, center. Now is this the only way to prune trees? No, it's not. You can cut it, you can do whatever you want. You can have a big old nasty bush. If you want to grow a big nasty, if you want to grow a big nasty fig tree and get some fruits, you're still going to get some fruit. The tree, the shape is going to be out of your control and that's where you have problems. As your tree grows from small, maybe the first month or so, I'll take off some of those early figs because I still want all the energy to go in that apical bud. And once the tree gets to about you know, three, four foot tall and it starts putting on figs, I'll let those stay, and then I can taste the figs then. I'm not in a hurry to get fruit off my fig trees. I want trees that are big and established. So in the third and fourth year, I'm getting a lot more fruit than if I had pinched the tree and had multiple branching off the bottom and really thin trunk that doesn't have the energy or capacity. You can look at some of my other videos where I show some tasting of some fruit that are late season fruit and they're just amazing. I got that fruit without sacrificing building a tree for the future. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe so you can find out how to grow the perfect fig tree for you.